here we have a rather unique boom box from 1982. It is the General Electric The Roadshow. And yes, while other boom boxes during this time did offer televisions, they were mostly black and white. This one is color, a five inch color. So here's my hand for reference. And to make things even stranger, it is a micro cassette recorder, not a standard compact cassette. And it gets even stranger. It is a stereo micro cassette recorder with metal micro cassette tape capability. So this one is really unique. Now, the OEM on this is actually sharp. And the television has the same voltage synthesis tuning controls as that little sharp TV that was unbranded in the Shintom uh, VCP. See, that those controls and that UHF light are identical. And while I'm there, you have your standard eighth inch headphone jack and RCA type aux line level inputs. On the front of the unit, speaker grills have been repainted. So those look pristine now. The micro cassette, however, is missing the little window that goes here. It's actually cracked in half and the previous owner held it together with scotch tape. That looked janky. I, no. This, I don't care. I, I could just remove it and live with it like that. That looks so much better than having a cracked display there. See? So there you go right here. Um, it has 12 channel memory. And when I got it, it was programmed with a bunch of weird stations. So I um, actually reset it to actual two through 13 using the Sencor um, test pattern generator. And uh, because it's a color TV, the proportions of this boom box is rather unusual. For example, as you can see, this is technically the top of the unit and the handle is here. So really it actually stands up and this is how you carry it. But when you get to use it, it sets down and I need the other hand to do this, but it'll lift up and rest on the handle as you saw. The micro cassette tape recorder is removable. It is convertible to a handheld pocket unit. But unlike other micro cassettes, there is no built-in speaker. The ca casing on it is all brushed aluminum. And it does have built-in stereo microphones left and right. Mm, has a electrical pause. Record LED. Q and review functions. And two different tape speeds and normal metal tape capability, which I'll explain later. It also has separate left and right volume controls, left and right microphone inputs, and stereo headphone jack. When connected to the unit, it has this connector here. It's kind of like a docking station. And then you just press down. And there you go, it's back in the unit. On the top of the unit, this is actually metal as well is your tuning dial scale a dual purpose vu meter slash tuning meter so yes this micro cassette actually has a vu meter power indicator fm stereo tuning dial, um, dial. power volume control uh before i continue when i bought this the seller said that the unit's power was permanently stuck on when I got it, as you will see when I had it disassembled, had a green wire jumper between the two power switch terminals. My first instinct was to remove it because it was a very, very sloppy solder job for one thing. Second of all, what's the first thing you do when you have unusual problems? Contact cleaner slash deoxit. That's what I use is deoxit. 
on all the controls because they were all scratchy. And by squirting it into the power switch and working it back and forth a few times, it started off with about 130, um, either 130K ohms or 130 ohms of resistance. And then it started working after a few cycles with no resistance at all. Leah, what is it? Can you wait? Oh, I better let her in. All right, come on. You wanna come in? The Macho Kitty. Come on, let's have a party in the living room. All right, so moving forward, balance control, tone control, TV, tape, and radio slash line input. If you're using the line level inputs, you leave it in radio mode and simply plug your RCA type cables into the side. It disconnects the radio and I actually recorded a, very few people have probably ever done this, a mix micro cassette tape. A mix tape on micro cassette. Stereo mono mode, FM and AM. Monopole antenna, completely intact. Coming around the back, you have a switch between internal and external antenna. I'm gonna put on internal because I'm gonna demonstrate shortly. At least FM. VHF, FM, UHF. Below that, your TV controls, such as brightness, con or, I'm sorry, brightness, color, tint, and picture, which is contrast. Your vertical hold control. And two separate inputs. You have your DC 12 to 15.5 volts and a charge port. So this did have a rechargeable battery. I did not get the power supply with this. There's there's actually two on eBay now for over 80 bucks. Uh, I don't think so. Anyways, so batteries, it takes 12D batteries. And people are gonna freak out about that. The 12 is because it's an 18 volt system. And I've had this thing running probably at least 18 hours now. Uh, TV maybe an hour, but I mean, I've been blasting this thing and it's still has a lot of juice in it. So even though I don't have the power supply for it, you know, it's working just fine on alkalines. Seems to be rather efficient. I would show you the battery compartment, but uh, if I open up that door, all the batteries will spill out. <laughs> you have to lean it forward to change them. And underneath the unit is the other information, such as it was manufactured December 1982. Here's the proper model number, the 4CM3326X. Notice how it has uh, GE's facility for their televisions in Portsmouth, Virginia. Made in Japan. It's made in Japan by Sharp. I guess because it was a color TV, they treated it as part of their television lineup rather than a boombox. I don't know. Just a wild guess. And you're going to say, well, I've been reviewing all these boom boxes, and a lot of them are General Electrics, but only I've only demonstrated one that was actually made by GE. What's the deal? I explained that before. It's probably due to cost. It's probably cheaper to OEM out the higher-end stuff. But the good news is, and by doing so, the models are completely unique. I try looking up the, if there's a sharp variant of this, and I can't find one or any other variant of it. So this may be completely unique to General Electric's lineup. And another thing point to make, some of the OEM stuff was top notch. All the other units I've been reviewing have been OEM by Funai. Vintage Funai was actually top notch back then. Ah, protective film, 1982 edition. So here you have the power switch. Just look at that. That little green wire is not supposed to be there. That just looks like pure crap. Look at that solder job. And then all the wires around that they melted. That, I mean, that was just terrible. So I took that green wire out. I sprayed the oxid in the cleaner. And that's resistance across the switch now. That 0.35 is just through the leads of the multimeter. And here are the speaker grills which were marked up, paint removed on some, scuffed up, so I repainted those. And here's the inside of the front panel. The CRT was made by Hitachi. 
sharp speakers. There's the main board, your tuner and IF stages, and then your sweep and video board. Uh, there's the CRT. Uh, even though it was behind that uh, sill safety glass, it was rather dirty after all these years. Got that cleaned up. All right, we're almost done. Got the repainted speaker grills back on. That looks a million times better. So all I think I had to do was adjust vertical size, a little shrunken, focus, and sub brightness to get it correct. Grayscale appears to be perfect. Audio is working, as well as the power switch is working now as it should. I mean, it's all it needed was contact cleaner, not sloppily solder a jumper across the terminals and say, it's permanently stuck on hoop a doop Now it's actually overloading the camera, but it, it does look very good. Let me back up to here. Let me zoom in. Let me see. Well, eh. Okay, so starting off on the tuner, we're going to flip the power switch on, which works beautifully now. I just need something that's cost effective. Is decided on its field of competition. College football's got to be. Kia.com Studios. Back to the classic hits on 94.5 3 WS. Hawks pick up WGPA nice and clear. Pretty clear. I think you and I talked about that. exalting servants of God. You get to hear your favorite podcast host talk. And now for the first time. Never loved you a little. is that weird station again it's in fm mono don't know bother with AM. There's nothing on AM worth interest that I can pick up in the house anyways. Someone said, uh, I got a few questions about my super radios, including the super radio boom box. Um, eventually, on a clear night like tonight, I'm going to take them outside and do it. See what stations we can pull in since I live on top of a hill. Now, that said, it does have pretty good stereo separation. And you can see how the VU meter works as a tuning meter as well. Power light, which is probably also your battery light. FM stereo. So we're going to switch to tape mode. So, yeah, you can actually record music on this in stereo. So I, since I've never got to experience this before, I'll probably say yes, it's probably the best one of the best sounding micro cassette recorders I've used to date. So how does it perform with music and such? Well, the metal tapes do exist, but they're very rare and very expensive. And uh, while it does sound really good, uh, the noise floor is a little high on it. So I could say it definitely would benefit from using metal tapes for music recording and 
regular tapes for dictation purposes. But that said, you gotta remember now, uh, 2.4 centimeters per second, that's roughly half the speed of a compact cassette. And then half the speed of that, you know, that's only really only good for dialogue air. I never used the uh, 1.2 centimeter per second speed. There are quite a few micro cassette boom boxes from the 80s. And um, there are some with TVs as well, but I, this is the only one I have ever seen with a color television. So let's uh, demonstrate the micro cassette. <laughs> So I'd love to see how this would perform with a metal micro cassette. That sounds rather decent. So functions. Here's uh, review. Here's cue. So, anyways, I've done nothing to this micro cassette deck. Everything works. Has plenty of torque. So original belts from 1982. Take counter accounting, as you could see. So, flip it around and hit play. So, yeah, you can hear it sounds great. It has, again, pretty good stereo separation as well. Pretty amazing. Now, how do you record with this? Well, the built-in microphones don't function with the unit when it's in tape mode, like here. You have to eject the cassette from here to utilize it, to utilize live recording. And that's where the one problem I ran into, I am missing the battery cover. You can also see it has AC bias. It has a beat cut switch for AM radio recording. Another thing that's amazing about this recorder it actually has auto stop. All the other micro cassette records I've used do not have auto stop on them. Hey Bandy, did you join the band today? Yeah, everybody's just hanging out. Bandy, what are you doing down there? Hey dude. Plant droppings. Leave those alone. And you, Leah, what are you doing? Hey, how are you? <laughs> well, so much for continuity. Um, I have to reshoot some of the TV scenes as well as I left out some information. So that's where I'm picking up the next day. This box here and Copyright 1988. Well, this box is from 1996. Uh, I've had this box all these years, and I put my micro cassette tapes in it and stuff. This bag here is the only micro cassette recorder I've ever owned. It's a GE from 1992, purchased at Service Merchandise. Um, this is, I could do this on a whole nother video, but. Thompson era and the one I looked at originally was I thought it was red but not red but like a burgundy or some sort of darker red color anyways this is what I've been using all my life I never bought any other micro cassette tape recorder and, and as you see I have the manual for it now in here are some tapes uh, I think these got picked up with something um, we purchased at the thrift store. So it, those are blanks. At least I bulk erased them. Play this tape first. Yeah, um, Emerson Collie uh, got to experience that one. <laughs> I played it for him in Harley too, which I'll actually insert a clip of it at the end of the video. It's from 1999. 
these are new old stock blank tapes picked up at the thrift store. Hence the tag on it. However, these Gemini tapes, the OG China Pride of the 90s. Now, this tape did not have that recording on it anymore. It, it kind of did in spots because I erased over it. Don't shoot me, I'm only the piano player. And that was my first Elton John album I ever experienced way back in 1987 when I was five years old. It's my dad's. And the way I put it on this tape was with the microphone of the micro cassette tape recorder here. Not a very ideal way of doing it, of course. Okay, so backing up. These are my two original tapes. I'll play that. So I actually re-recorded that whole album on that machine there. The Olympus tapes came next. And this guy here is should be one of my original tapes. This tape here, I don't know where it came from because usually it'd be in a pack. But this was from one of my college classes, except it was in the lab and we were doing silly stuff in there. It wasn't as I quite as I remember. There, were, I think I edited bits and pieces out in this in a digital file um, for that. But yeah, so this exists. This is from two thousand one. But all these other tapes, I ended up bulk erasing. I was a little disappointed when I pulled this out. I couldn't remember what was on them. Unfortunately, these four were well, rather boring and uninteresting. So I took my Radio Shack Realistic Bulk Eraser and blanked them. There's a clip of me from circa 1993, I think. And it wasn't recorded over the phone, but recorded with a memo function on that machine that will record a message onto the answer machine tape. And it has the beeps in there. So, I'll insert that. Hello, Mom. It's me. Won't you call me back soon, okay? Bye. It's the micro cassette. So, 2022, 1994. There you go. And I was just recording random stuff off the TV. But yeah, I just thought I'd show you that. I have a lot of cool things. A lot of things I've had since childhood I still have. I didn't play with toys much. I always play with electronics. In fact, that staple puller uh, right there uh, is in my desk right now. So a lot of things I had back then, I still have now. Yeah, since uh, V. Westlife did that really cool avocado green wood grain Dymo label maker, mine's a bit newer. I got this Easter of 1992. Why Easter? Well, I did not eat candy. So this is my label maker I've had since 1992. So happy 30th anniversary to my Dymo. And so I still have some of the labels here. I need to get some of that wood grain stuff. That is, and, and the avocado green, that, that'd be kick ass. But yeah, that label maker put that label on way back in 1992, maybe 93. Another cool thing you probably saw when I had disassembled, the speakers are actually have a purple tint to them, as you can see. So in a bright room, that's kind of what it looks like. Pretty cool. <laughs> so yeah, here we go. The re-record of it, properly recorded, onto a device that actually does record to micro cassette. Oh, there's Elton John here. Without raising the antenna either. Okay, well, that's the signal strength on it. Well, two, two notches down. Okay, let's put it in the tape mode. Just real quick, I just want to see this. Daniel's 
try TV operation uh, for the time being I have a DVD player and VCR hooked to us TV does not have line level AV inputs I mean other than the audio but I mean for video there's no video in so I'll be doing it right off the tuner those bows up to get fast the cliff guns <laughs> Drive some crazy. So there you are. It's in tailspin. First time in one. Little monitor's great. Cape Suzette, kiddo. What do you think? Very good sound as well as picture. That was just to start up, anyways. Yeah, whenever you first power it on, it defaults to channel two. So, as I mentioned, I programmed all these proper to match the label here. Picture tube is nice and bright. I'm gonna go pop in, I don't know. Some Mick MacGyver. Saving the McMansion community one paperclip at a time. <laughs> Should a VU meter, so this is probably the only micro cassette recorder with a VU meter. There's probably others out there, but you know, I'm just saying. Wow! Hey! What the? I need one of you guys for a special mission. Sure. No problem. What? What? Just the thing for these undercover kitties. <gasps> well, I'm certainly gonna see a light at the end of this tunnel. I may be a mess, but do you hear a hit? It's nothing. Quit goofing off, you rhyme and reject. We're <laughs> probably under the wall now. Best thing we'll do, we'll see how it plays a VHS tape. This is a 1987-88 Funai VCR. Mom over. SSC 500. I did not do a video on this yet. And again, once showing, you now vintage pre 90s Funai is a totally different animal. This thing's all metal, it has weight to it, power transformer, and it still works fine. And it gets the picture and sound quality exceed your expectations for VHS. So, here's a period correct 1982 movie. I, uh, this is obviously a re-release. I have the original on beta.
out. Thanks for watching. A special shout out and thanks to Liz and Maddie, our superstar patrons.